Good morning, everybody. Dr. Anita here with Mylon Family Chiropractic. You are riding in the car with the Cairo. So the last week or so, I, I have not struggled with what we're going to talk about today because it's been so prevalent in conversation in the practice that I felt that uh, there are a lot more folks out there that are struggling with this than we are really aware of. So what I've discovered is uh, people are really, really struggling with virus depression or the COVID depression. What do I mean by that? Well, I have a ton of young families in my practice with kiddos in school, but they're not really in school. Good morning, Angela. They're actually partially in school, not in school, um, and they're having the school from home. And what we've discovered is these kids' identity really is related to their social network. And by them not being in school with their peers, even though they see each other on those Zoom calls, the reality is they feel very disconnected. And so I've had a number of parents coming in talking about their kids uh, saying things like, I just want to die. I, I don't know why I'm living anymore. Um, you know, why bother? It doesn't matter. Um, nobody's liking my posts. Things like that. The, the challenge with that is that their identity is a false identity because that identity is related to what other people outside of them selves equates to who they are. And it's so sad that in the world that we live in today, because of COVID especially, that it's been magnified to the umpteenth level because they've been disconnected from their peers. And without that peer interaction, they've grown up in a world that that peer interaction is everything. And without it, they feel like they have no reason to exist. And so a number of them um, are talking about suicide. And then on the flip side of that, I've got mom and dad coming in saying, you know, I love my kid. Hi, Michael. I don't know how to help my child. I just don't know what to do. I mean, we're there for them. We're, you know, encouraging them. We're working with them, yet they still are struggling with this identity of worth. And that identity of worth is correlated to this false media of social media, of Instagram and TikTok and, and uh, Snap and all of that silliness. And they've grown up in a society that their worth is equated to, in their eyes, not at mine, but their worth is equated to how they're liked on social media. And so mom and dad are coming in extremely stressed out, never mind the fact that they're having to try and homeschool while they're trying to go to work, but then they're dealing with this emotional distress that their kid is experiencing as a result of COVID because they're in outright emotional lockdown because they're not able to engage with their peer group. Nobody's hugging these kids. Nobody's touching these kids. They can't, you know, do fist pumps with their buddies anymore. I mean, uh, they're just so disconnected. And if they're not getting uh, the likes and the, the hearts and the, the memes that are positive, from the social world, they feel like they have no value. And then on the other side of that, the parents are flipping out because they don't know how to help their kids. So on left and right, giving referrals for therapists to help the child. But we also know that I am helping the parents by keeping their nervous system free of interference and giving them the touch and the hug and encouragement that they're doing the best that they can considering the circumstances. And then I have the other end of the spectrum. I had two uh, this week alone, today's Thursday. So two this week, my seniors, who the only people that they've seen is me or another doctor that they've gone for a medical evaluation. And I'm the only person touching them as their chiropractor. How sad is that, that the only connection that people are getting now because of COVID and COVID is real. Nobody's discounting that it's not real, but holy cow, the seriousness of the effects of this COVID lockdown is beyond. Now I have a bunch of healthcare practitioners in my practice, nurses, um, respiratory therapists, people in the healthcare field. They are telling me locally, locally. Right now, there's very few COVID cases in the hospital. 
Now, I watch, I don't really watch the news. People tell me, right? And they tell me that, oh, the numbers are going up. I had one uh, retired nurse come in yesterday, tell me that COVID numbers are going up. They're not going up where I am. So while they may be going up in other areas, they're not going up here. They did go up initially after the, um, the Jewish New Year, but they've stopped. And we're not hearing about deaths anymore related to COVID. We're just hearing about cases. And what these nurses and respiratory specialists have shared with me is people are so scared. We are living in a fear. We are scared to death that we're going to die of a virus that is 99% treatable. It was not in March. I get it. And if you were sick in March, it sucked beyond our imagination. And if you're living with the effects of that, because we didn't have the treatment protocol that we have now, I feel for you. I have some of you in my practice. It sucks. But the reality is that we're living in a time now where we have the very best medical care available in the world, in the world, and we can treat it. It has a 99% recovery. That's not me pulling that number out of my you know what. That is the t- statistics over and over and over. So why are we in lockdown? So many of our loved ones are stuck going, I don't know who I'm going to see on Thanksgiving. I don't think we're going to go anywhere. The The seniors that I saw this week are like, we're staying home. I guess we'll get a, a dinner that... Uh, you know, a pre-made dinner. Here they are, 80 plus years old, and they have to spend their Thanksgiving alone out of fear. I personally told them to go see somebody because they're almost 90, this couple that I saw. Listen, if you're almost 90, does it matter at this point? You've lived a good long life. Don't you deserve to live the rest of your life fulfilled, happy, around your loved ones. They have children and grandchildren that they haven't seen because they've been in lockdown. I mean, definitely make sure everybody is healthy. Don't go into an environment where people aren't well, but darn it, go see your loved ones. You need that touch. You need that affection. You need that love. We all need that. And our young kids need to know that you're there for them, that their their, um, self-worth does not equate to what their social worth is. If that's uh, for lack of better terminology, I don't really know what to say about it other than social worth. But social worth is bunk, right? But here's the deal. All this worrying, it affects our nervous system. It causes our nervous system to be distressed. And when our nervous system is distressed, it causes our immune system to be distressed, right? And if our immune system is distressed, we are more likely to succumb to whatever comes down the pike. Whether it's a cold, whether it's a flu, whether it's another virus, or whether it is, God forbid, COVID. I hope it's not, right? But we will succumb because our nervous system is in overload, because it's so stressed out. The chiropractic approach is really simple, though. What we do as chiropractors is make sure that your nervous system is working at its very best potential by removing any interference. When we do that, hey, Mikey, when we do that and make sure that that nervous system is working at its very best, your body will adapt at its ideal level. So even if you've been exposed to a virus of any kind, and I'm here to tell you, many of us have been exposed to this ugly virus and we probably didn't even know it at the time, right? But we've been exposed and we didn't succumb. And the reason why you don't succumb is because your body's working at its very best. The way to keep your body working at its very best is to see a chiropractor on a regular basis. That's the key. Now, let's talk about some strategies to help our seniors and our young ones to find out how they we can avoid this stress of depression because it's freaking real. And I'm concerned about our youth today. So one of the strategies I love is to engage with your kids more so than, hey, how you doing? You want to talk. Because no teenager wants to talk to you, mom and dad. I'm sorry. I know you live in a bubble and you think my kids always want to talk to me. No, they don't. They don't want to talk to you, right? But they will talk to you if you put them in an environment where they can talk to you. One of the ways you can do that, which is really good for them and you, is to go 
for a hike. Go for a walk, even if it's in the neighborhood. Just grab them and say, come on, put your sneakers on. We're going to take the dog for a walk. If you got a dog, that's a perfect excuse to get the kiddos out with you. And just go for a stroll. And don't make it any heavy-duty conversation. Just make it a conversation. So, you know, um, what was the toughest part of today's uh, challenges with school today? What went on in social media? Who's being a jerk today? Relate to them, even if you can't. I mean, who knows what the hell's going on in those kids' social media. But open the dialogue. Open the door for them to have dialogue with you to help them. Oh, so-and-so's being a jerk. Yeah, what, what, what exactly did they say? And, and why do you feel that way? And how does it make you feel to know that they say stuff like that about other people? Do you call that person a friend? I mean, talk them through it. That is your skill set, mom and dad. That's what you're really great at. And you do that from a loving and non-judgmental state. With regards to our seniors, mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, please go and see them. I've got caregivers that work in nursing facilities and some of them come in with tears in their eyes and they say to me, doc, you know, it was a really rough day today and it's a rough day. I said, why is it a rough day today? You know, I had two seniors who I was bathing and when I was bathing them, I gave them a hug. I always hug them when I bathe them and they squeezed me so tight and they're so weak, but they squeezed me so tight because what breaks my heart is I'm the only person who touches them. I'm the only one who gives them a hug. So they look forward to bath time with me because I'm the only one who will touch them. And one of my uh, workers in the uh, healthcare field said to me in a nursing facility, with all this lockdown and wearing a mask and, and a shield and all this, all you see is their eyes. She decided to take a selfie picture without a mask and stuff on. She printed it out and she put that picture on her badge so that when she walks into each room, she has her picture and she got that instituted in the nursing facility she works in. How beautiful is that? So that that patient gets to see who in the face they're actually working with. You don't realize how devastating it is to not be able to see people's facial expressions when those are the only people you get to see all day, every day, because for a while there, they weren't allowing any guests. I think now they've opened up some guests, um, certain criteria have to get tested, et cetera, et cetera. But now they're allowing family to come into the nursing facilities. But imagine you're at the end of your life in your 80s or 90s. You're uh, struggling with whatever diseases that you may have and you have no interaction with your loved ones. Nobody is allowed to come in and hold your hand at the end of your life. Hi, Gabrielle. Welcome. How sad and depressing it is for these, yeah, exactly, for these people at the very end of their life that they're alone. I, I, I can't live with that. I can't live with that. So I had a discussion uh, uh, Monday with one of the gals and said, listen, once they lift up the restrictions about COVID, and I don't know when the heck that is, but the healthcare workers in the facility are so darn stressed out because they see the dejectedness in their patients' eyes and I feel it in their spines and nervous systems and they carry it home with them. And all I can do is help them and love on them through chiropractic. But so we're in the works of trying to figure out how I can get in there and uh, possibly take care of the workers because the workers that come to me, the things that they get said to them from their coworkers is, why are you so damn happy? Why do you have so much energy? What's up with you? What's going on with you? Where you been? And the only thing they're doing different is they're going to the chiropractor. Because here's the deal. The beauty of chiropractic is when we release the inborn potential of the human body, the body expresses itself so magnificently and beautifully that they light up with energy. So even though they're in this negativity of surroundings, they're still lit up because they know there's always hope to be better and healthier. And they're gonna ride that wave because they know they're a better server of their patients when they are healthier themselves. So they can give more of themselves when they've taken care of themselves. And that's a beautiful thing for me as their chiropractor. And I hope that sending this message out to you um, 
healthcare workers, I'm here for you, man. You need chiropractic in your life in dealing with all the devastation that you've been through. You definitely have PTSD from long ago when this uh, situation started. Um, when we get rushes and increases in cases, you have PTSD and keeping your nervous system balanced is going to be key and only the chiropractor can help you do that. Um, for you moms and dads out there struggling with your kiddos uh, homeschooling and you're feeling stressed out, let's get your nervous system checked. Let's get the kids checked. Let's get them touched by the chiropractor. Maybe they don't want to receive anything from you, but what if we can get their nervous system working right? I have some teens coming in now and they're lighting up again. They're coming alive again. It's beautiful. And sometimes we need help. And I have a number of uh, therapists that I can help you with referring you to, to get you on the path to help your kid. Because I'm here to tell you, if they say they want to harm themselves and they don't want to live anymore, it's big business, man. It's serious. Do not downplay it that they're looking for attention. They are looking for attention, but that's serious stuff. Do not let that be pushed under the rug. Take every time they say that absolutely seriously, reach out and get them some support so that they don't have to live feeling like that because that's an ugly rabbit hole that they go down, all right? And for my seniors out there, for your seniors, your loved ones, grandma and grandpa, please let them come over for Thanksgiving. Please let them know that your family is safe if you're safe. Please let them know that you love them and you want to see them and you want to hug them. And if they want to sit a number of distance apart, that's fine. Get them in the room with the energy. Don't let them eat Thanksgiving dinner by themselves. That sucks in plain English, man. Invite them over and love on your family because we have so much to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. We're alive. We're healthy, most of us. And we don't want our seniors to spend their last years alone. Lastly, in order to keep your nervous system as balanced as possible, see your chiropractor on a regular basis. If you live local, see me, I'm in Bayville, right? If you don't live local and you wanna find a chiropractor, reach out to me, message me, whatever. I will find you an amazing doc to manage your spine and nervous system so that you can be at your very best. So this is Dr. Anita. You've been riding in the car with the Cairo. I look forward to seeing you next week in our next ride. Have a fantastic day.